Hey everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about IT, cybersecurity, education, and career things. In today's video, I'm going to be covering Western Governors University's kind of newish network engineering and security degree. I've had a lot of requests to go over this, so I thought I would go ahead and do that. And before I get started, I just want to say I'm sorry that I'm wearing sunglasses. I've been in front of the screen a lot recently, like maybe like 10 to 12 hours per day because I still work full time. I do YouTube. I started doing TikTok now, and I'm also kind of developing a course on the side. And with the ring light, it just tends to be too much. So until I find a better solution, uh, I'm just going to wear sunglasses. So super sorry about that. But anyway, a brief overview of what we're going to cover in this video. I'm just going to touch on WG really quick, like what it is in case some people don't know. I'm going to look at the current BS and network operations and security and kind of compare it with the new network engineering and security tracks. I'm going to take a look at the two different network engineering and security tracks, like the two new ones they made. One is a kind of general track and the other one is system go specific. We'll talk about a few acceleration techniques as well as some ways to save money if you're interested in enrolling in these programs. And then finally, I'll try to make some kind of judgment on which program is better, like the, the generic one or the Cisco specific one. And then I'll wrap up the video kind of with my final thoughts on the program. So if you appreciate me putting together all these materials, please consider liking, maybe even subscribing as well. So yeah, let's get started. And for those of you who don't know, WGU is an online accredited university, basically the way it works. Instead of paying for credits, you essentially pay for time. So you pay for one term at a time, which is about six months. And then depending on the program, it's around like $3,500 to $4,000 per term or per six months. And basically the way it works is you can complete as many courses as you can in that six month time period. And if you are super smart and strategized and you just so happen to finish your whole degree in that six month time period, then you just get a bachelor's degree for you know $3,500 or $4,000 or whatever the case may be. So that's kind of how WG works. I do have three degrees from WGU. I have two bachelor's and a master's degree. I made a lot of other content about it, so check that out if you want to. And then getting into the current network operation security degree and comparing it to the new network engineering and security degree. I made a couple of spreadsheets here, so let's take a look at those. And I'll definitely put a link to these in the description. It's really hard to look at on my screen, I know. So just check out the description. Um, you can blow it up on your own screen. But basically on the left, this is the current network operation and security degree. And on the right, this is the new network engineering and security degree. And there's there's quite a few differences, but some, the main thing that like really sticks out to me is there seems to be like less general classes on the, the new network engineering and security degree. So here we have like English composition one and two, but on the new network engineering and security degree, we have a whole bunch of discrete maths with algorithm and cryptography. Um, I'm assuming we're gonna learn how to do like asymmetric cryptography and maybe learn the RSA algorithm and maybe like extended Euclidean algorithm or something like this, just a guess. But there's more programming and like hard technical classes in the new network engineering degree, which is really, really cool. Both versions of the new network engineering degree have a lot more programming and version control type classes over here. So I see like version control down here and then software defined networking, super, super cool in the new network engineering degree. So that's just like a high level overview. You can kind of look through this a little bit more on your own time, but I thought I would touch on that really quick. And then next we're going to look at the two network engineering and security degrees side by side. So the left side here is going to be the generic one. On the right side here is going to be the Cisco centric or the Cisco specific one. Again, I'll put a link to this in the description. I know it's really hard to see on my screen, but basically all of the general classes and the core classes for both tracks are the same. When we start getting into the program specific courses, on the left is the general one, right? And on the right is the Cisco specific. We have like IoT for the general track, but the Cisco specific, we have like the Cisco Cyber Ops certification the Cisco DevNet certification, as well as CCNA on the right. And on, on the left, in lieu of those, we kind of have the more generic versions of those. So we have like a network and security apps. This is CompTIA Security Plus, network automation and deployment. This is like CompTIA Cloud Plus, software defined networking, and then we have version control. So I assume this software defined networking in conjunction with the version control on the generic side is probably the equivalent to the DevNet on the Cisco specific side. Both of these courses are, are really, really good. And I'm particularly particularly impressed with all of the discrete math in these and the emphasis on programming and version control in both tracks. It's kind of like they took network engineering and then some components of software engineering or computer science and kind of crammed them into one degree, which is super, super cool to me. It's like my two of my favorite things. Like I really enjoyed doing Cisco and I really enjoyed doing computer science-ish things. And they, it looks like they kind of made a really useful, marketable degree and combined the two, which is really, really cool to look at. I 
will say I did take discrete math one and two from computer science, and I know they're probably different from what we're seeing here, but discrete math, in my opinion, is like really applicable to the real world and really applicable to a lot of computing concepts as well. It's really interesting, and I'm really surprised and happy to see that they included discrete math in here. So yeah, I almost feel like FOMOing in is like getting another bachelor's degree, but that's like absolutely ridiculous, so I won't do that. But it is a really, really cool program, to be honest. And then next, we're going to hop in and look at a few acceleration strategies and money saving strategies in case you want to enroll in these and then finish faster than usual and or save a little bit of money. I made these spreadsheets here. I'll put a link to this in the description as well. Of course, on the bottom, there's going to be some tabs, this net Eng sec tab, which is the general one, and then the Cisco one. So these are pretty much the same thing, but one is general, one is for Cisco. And I'll I'll kind of explain everything here like super quickly. Of course, this column here is the course ID. It's just the ID that WGU gives each course. So say you enroll in the program and you want to search on Reddit or something for tips on how to pass a specific course, you might say like, you know, WGU D265 Reddit or something like this, and you'll get strategies for critical thinking. But that's what that is. Course name, of course, units, the number of like credits or units. And then this column here is the study.com equivalent column. So what you can do with this is WGU has partnerships with different kind of educational institutions where you can take classes at those organizations and then transfer them into WGU and then kind of satisfy them for your program. So I'll put a link to this in the description too, but WGU has this partners page here where it shows like a bunch of different like academic organizations and for example, we can click on study.com and then we can go to College of Information Technology and then we can find, for example, network engineering and security and just kind of click this. And this page that you're looking at here, I just kind of cleaned this up and then transferred it into this spreadsheet here. So it's kind of easier to look at and makes a little bit more sense. So basically this study.com column, these are the equivalents that you can take at study.com and then transfer them into your WGU degree. And the whole reason you might wanna do this is study.com generally speaking is cheaper than WGU is on a month per month basis. So if you wanted to, you could complete all of these courses at study.com before enrolling in WGU and kind of transfer them all in and potentially save a decent amount of money. Same thing with Sophia.org. I kind of put the equivalent courses here. If you want to go through and take the courses at Sophia, transfer them into the program and then potentially save at least some money for sure, but potentially save some time as well. And I made this other video here. It goes in depth about how to use study.com and transfer in courses and save money and all that. So check that out if you would like. Also, there's a discount code here. If you want to save 30% on your first three months, you shouldn't really need more than three months anyway to do all the transfer courses from study.com. So, so definitely check that out. That will be a pretty decent amount of money saved. So what this might look like, for example, say you want to do all the classes from sophia.org. So I'll just like filter all these out. And then what you have left over is instead of 40 whatever classes or so, it's gonna be like 27 or 28 classes. And then say you wanna do the rest at study.com. So we'll filter out all the study.com classes. And then it will look something like this. So now you have only 23 courses left to complete a WGU instead of 40 something. And if you really wanted to, you could do the certs outside of WGU as well. So it'll look something like this. So then once you actually register at WGU, you only have 20 classes left to complete, which will kind of reduce the amount of terms that you have to work, thus kind of reducing the amount that you ultimately pay for your degree. Like you don't have to do this obviously, but it's just an option that you can do. I did this for both my IT and comp sci degrees and it worked out pretty well, but yeah, just something to think about. Again, I'll put a link to this spreadsheet and everything in the description if you wanna kind of play around with it and see like the different things you can do to graduate faster than normal. Next, I'm gonna try to figure out which degree is better. It's like really subjective, but I'll, I'll try to do, I'll try to include some like quantitative data so we can look at something useful. So down here on the same spreadsheet, I have this job hits score tab. So go ahead and click on that if you're following along with me. And basically the best thing I could do to figure out like which one was better is I just looked at all the certifications for both tracks. So the left side is the standard track, right side is the Cisco track. And I just kind of tallied up how many hits for each certification I found on Indeed and LinkedIn. So for example, as of today's date, which is July 3rd, 
um, for ITIL, Indeed had 24,379 job hits. LinkedIn had 28,248 job hits. And I kind of went through and counted up all these job hits for each cert in each degree. They both have ITIL Project Plus and Linux LPI. The standard track has Cloud Plus and Security Plus as opposed to CyberOps, DevNet Associate, and CCNA. And the Cisco track, it's really apparent uh, because of CCNA, it's just such a ubiquitous cert and everyone essentially knows what it is. The Cisco track ends up like winning out purely based on the certification and job hits and um, I would tend to agree with this I'm not saying like the standard track is worse per se but CCNA is just such a beast monster of a cert it's so good it's like the best entry-level cert in my opinion everyone knows what it is it's great for HR and it's great for getting interviews obviously like the caveat to that is it's quite hard if you've ever taken CCNA it has a, a bit of a learning curve if you're like brand new to IT but uh, the payoff for that is it's a really super great best in slot certification so if I had to pick one I'd probably say the Cisco track is better but but both of them are really really good programs honestly and then the final thoughts to kind of wrap things up I think this degree like I said is really really cool because it like meshes computer science together with networking which are like two of my absolute favorite things. I really wanted to be a network engineer at the beginning of my career, but I just ended up getting pulled in too many directions. So ignoring computer science and software development, this is probably, I don't know, it's really hard to say, like the cloud tracks are really good at WGU, but this is probably tied for first place with one of the cloud tracks, honestly, in terms of marketability and just how cool the program is. But the caveat to that, I will say it's probably going to take longer than average to complete this one, especially the Cisco track because it has CCNA and CCNA is like not that that easy in terms of entry level certifications. Discrete math also might be like a little bit hard if you're not used to those concepts. And then again, it has a lot of programming concepts in here as well. If you're okay with taking slightly longer to complete your degree, this is, you can't really go wrong with this one in terms of like the actual course content and certifications and everything. I'm a little bit mad at WGU for, for ghosting me all the time, but I, I will say they're doing like a really good job with the new tracks they're making. So, uh, so good job on that, I guess. I'm gonna give a super shout out and thank you to all my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me in the channel. I really appreciate it a lot. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.